when you want to model extent one of the things that you often need is to extract objective data that characterizes the structural behavior of such extent such structural parameters can include things like longitudinal retraction elastic recall dog boning or foreshortening in this video i will show you how to obtain one of these structural parameters called the elastic or radial recall let us sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling So as we begin this modeling, the first thing to think about is the stent model that we're working with. And this is basically the longitudinal view. And I've already isolated these points that are highlighted in red as reference points for us in extracting the elastic recall of the material. If you look at it from the side view, you can see the positions of the different stents. We want to kind of note them. So for example, the first one here, which is the same as one that appears here, is the proximal or the top position of the stent. And then we also have the central ones which appear here and then finally the distal ones which also appear like that so we need to note these things because they are all going to be important when we're trying to extract the elastic recall of the material if you look more closely on the proximal ones they are occupying a position in space so we need to note the node number associated with that particular point in number one and number two so i'm calling in node one and node two to represent one on the left and one on the right of the material this is in the xz view of the specimen and then the distance between those two will form the diameter of the stent now we need to note the coordinate positions for those two materials and then using those two coordinate positions we can go ahead and calculate this distance phi and that's basically a Euclidean norm of that material and this is the formula that you're going to use to do that now just to look more closely so in the original configuration of the stent when it's unexpanded so this is the configuration where this is the balloon and then the pink that are in blue is the stent material so if we find the internal diameter of this we're going to work with internal diameter so that defines our original diameter and then the next thing is the second stage of the deformation is when it is fully expanded so this is kind of what the simulation will look like in the fully expanded state and then the internal diameter becomes our phi expanded which represents the expanded diameter of the stent and then the third stage is when there is a recoil so you've taken out the loading reverse the pressure and then this the stent recoils back so the kind of position you will see is that the balloon will be in here and then this is the recalled position of the stent and then the diameter associated with that is also called phi recalled and then with that we can then put together a kinematics of the stent diameter this is basically the position as a function of time of the diameter during the deformation of the system and the important things to note is that right at the beginning this is a measure of our original diameter and then at the second stage we have a measure of the expanded diameter and then right at the end we also have a measure of the record diameter this information will then be taken to inform our elastic recall calculation and that calculation basically says the expanded diameter minus the recall diameter divided by the expanded diameter times 100 would be our radial recall as a percentage if you really want to learn a bit more about some of these ideas that are in this video i published it in this journal uh, please do dig up this journal and read and i think you'll get some more information if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so so that when content like this are made you'll be the first to see it i also would encourage you to share like and leave me a comment in the comment section of this video of maybe ideas or videos you would like me to make or anything related to the video that interests you let's now go into abacus and begin this modeling so when you finish setting up your model and running the simulation of the stand, this is typically the kind of result you will get. So basically we've got the balloon here and we've got the stent. What we want to do next with this is to find out what structural parameters characterizes the stent. And the first one we want to look at here is the elastic recall. So what we're going to do is let's go back to the model and you have your model appearing like this in this instance. So this is just the design of the stent. And what we want to do is to give some insight into different points we want to track on the stent because for these structural parameters to be generated we need to track certain points in the stent and so what i will do first is to go into the set i've already done this before so basically you there are points on the stent so after measuring the stent you need to track certain points in the stent and how are we going to do that so already i've set up the all ref points for myself in this model and you can see where they are so this is the the proximal point at the top the middle one is the distal central one and the one at the bottom is the distal one so if we look at this in 
view from the side so you can't end up with this kind of deformation if you look at it from the this so i try to make them to be as almost at the same position because we're going to track them diametrically to see what's happening with this material so just to kind of give you an idea of how to do this so and i'll recommend that you switch to the meshing module so you go to the top here and switch to the meshing module so i double click on the set here and i'm going to call it reference points or and i will suggest the type instead of a geometry go to the nodal type the nodal type because it's nodes that you're tracking so you switch on to the node and then continue so i'll go to the side view here and then look at what you're trying to track so if we zoom in here okay so i could then pick up a point there and zoom out now press zoom back in here pick that point but make sure you press down shift as to select this point so this is the point that you really want to select okay and then you zoom out so you're you're on making sure that shift is selected so those two are included in your setup so we did it with the xz view so another xz view now turns the system around so you're looking at it from the bottom end so you zoom back in here make sure you go close to where you want press down shift and select that data and then zoom back out and pick up the other point that is diametrically opposite to it zoom back in make sure you're selecting the right one and then press down shift and select that so if we go back to the view so you could see we've got all the four of them together now without clicking on the system you just rotate it to get it into a position where you can see the longitudinal view so you turn off perspective so you are sort of in this position this environment and then you turn around and then sort of let's just go somewhere around here so this is the point we are tracking so we're looking at the middle position and we zoom into this middle position right click cancel procedure press down shift make sure you are pressing down shift so that you add this point to the other ones you've used before so we are going to pick somewhere maybe around here this probably could be our central point so i select that and then i rotate the system around to make sure i get the point that is diametrically opposite to it which will be somewhere around there so again you sort of try and pick something maybe in the middle here this could be your central position in this so you select that pressing down shift so now if we then look at it okay so it does look correct okay so the central ones are okay the bottom ones and the top ones they are all fine and click done so what, what we've done here is i've added this new point reference point all um for for our setup and then that's what basically what we're going to use for the simulation so the other thing that you need to do is to track the history variable so if you double click on here so i'm going to collect my reference point or history output for example attach it to this step which is expand step and then whatever your expand step is and then you track that reference points all and the three things that you need to track are really the coordinate positions so coordinate one coordinate two coordinate three so this is the xyz position and then you may also be interested in the displacements as well if you want but the key things that we need are those three coordinate positions and then you click ok so once you set up this model and you have everything the way you wanted it so the other thing that you need to make sure you have in mind is what is the nodal numbers for these coordinate positions that you are tracking and so what i'm going to do here is okay let's go back to the top to this case so what we need is let's zoom in to exactly so let's zoom in to exactly the stand that we want the node that we want which is that so i'll go to view part display option so under the mesh so what i want here is just the node levels okay so apply that so you can see right away here it's showing us that the node level for that particular first node is 373 okay so i'll tick that again and then go back to the view okay so and then you track this other one so you can zoom into this other one so as you're noting these things please note the numbers because you're going to use them later on with your simulation so apply again so this is 145 so and and so on so you basically go through that so if we come back so what we've done here is that we've created this nodal set and we've noted the node levels for all this set because we're going to use later on for our analysis so in terms of generating the plot that you you need so what we need to do here is under create xy data so we want to track the history output 
So this is the sort of information that you get with the history output. And clearly, you now need to know what the node levels will be for your model. So in, in the case, when I ran the simulation previously, so the node levels were noted and these are the numbers 141175. And the very first one is 371 and 175. So this is for the top um, distal point. So I'll pick up that. So this coordinate one so i'll press down shift set pick and pick that and then i'll in the coordinate which is the y direction i'll pick the same which is one seven five and three seven one and one seven five three seven one so this is for the x the y and the z coordinate positions for this material and once you got that you plot it in this means so what you find here is that it gives you all the information that you need reference node so we can then extract that information so i'll go to excel utilities just current plot and what i want to do is i want to take that information and put it into excel so that we can then use it to study more about what's happening so when you get into excel this is the kind of data that you generate this is the time axis this is the exposition the time axis the exposition the time axis the y position and so on so what i want to do is i just want to only have one axis one axis of time so i'll press down shift select press down control and select all the time columns and remove them from the data so i delete all the time columns so that what i would have would be exactly this now that i've taken out the time data leaving only the first time information so i can select all of that Control a and Control c to copy now i've already formatted an excel sheet which is this so this is a formatted excel sheet that I've, I've, i'm providing for for you to use for for this analysis so that information that we got which is the time data and all the positions so we just paste it in there okay so i'll paste it in here and then i can go to the end and say okay so it's got there the only thing i've done here is to then show you how to implement that Euclidean norm and if you look here it's basically i'm using the y and z data because this is the way the implant the formation is going on so we are leaving off the x data so we're looking working with the x and y data so some of the other information so the analysis type that we're working with is elastic recall the node number to the left for the stop is 175 and 371 for the right node 2 and the longitudinal axis of this system is obviously in the x direction so that our focus will then be on the y axis for this now the original diameter can be calculated so i provided a, a way of calculating the original diameter which is basically the first point the expanded diameter and the recall diameter and then we'll calculate the elastic recall now if we look more closely as to what's happening here so basically this is the data that you generate from the simulation so where the node the black one is the left node node one in the y-axis so you get that and the red one is the right node node 371 in the z-axis and so on so you basically put them together so basically the y-axis and then this ones are the z-axis so there's not a lot of movement in the z direction but there's clearly a lot of movement in the x y direction for this and that's what you see here so initially this is the original position and then in the middle is the fully expanded and the end is the recalled position for this material so what i then did was to take the diametrical data the diameter data as a function of time to get what is called the kinematics of the stent which is basically the position of the diameters and this is sort of what you get here the initial point here is the original diameter the middle point here is the expanded and the, at the end here you get the record data so that's 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 that so in terms of using this data clearly you need to provide information for this coming from your simulation you need to provide this node 1 and node 2 data and also what longitudinal axis you're working with which is x and then all these other bits are automatically calculated by the script and then at the end we get an elastic recall of 15 percent for this material so this is just for the proximal top so we're calculating this right at the top of the stent the central data so there's a central data so the diameter of the node numbers are different now so we've got these two as our node numbers and then you put the same information and it gets you the elastic recall so you go to the star and put the same node numbers and you get that same information as well so at the end once you generated all this information you can then create a comparison plot which basically gives you a measure of way of comparing all this information so right at the top here so again i've got all the nodes that i tracked the longitudinal direction the original diameters how they were calculated and the elastic recall with a little bit of a graph in the end to show you what is going on so at the end you find out that okay the top and the distal ends are having a comparable 
ready elastic recall the center not so much there's a slight difference in the center but in the end you can then then take this as an average you know and report it that elastic recall of the system is basically this average of these three behavior if you want you also may find out that in analyzing your system that the, this these values actually are markedly different depending on the behavior of the stand and and this really begins to give you an idea as to what is useful and what is not useful but this is the objective of this video to kind of show you how to go about doing this the final point i want to make is that this um, excel sheet that i've used for this analysis is available in the download section of this video so please if you do need it to use for analysis please feel free to download them and use them as freely as you as you want so if you're interested in how to actually set up a stent model this is the video that you want to look at if you want to see how i've run the stent model um, and generated the kind of simulation that we want this is the video that you want thank you for interest in this channel and do subscribe if you haven't subscribed and i'll see you in the next video bye bye